So we talked about related rates problems yesterday, and they were pretty basic. We're going to get into some harder related rates problems today. Um, so the first one was on your homework, but there's actually kind of some shortcuts to doing it, and something that is very crucial that you do in AP Calc, um, which is always change things from degrees to radians. And you'll see why the answer you have on your homework is probably not completely right. All right, so the first thing says two sides of a triangle have lengths of 12 and 15 meters. So like I was saying, that's pretty big. I don't know what would make a triangle with 12 and 15 meters, but we'll go with it. And we kind of mentioned this yesterday. If things are constant, you can plug them into the equation, okay? So these are a constant 12 and 15 meters. Imagine you have like these two sticks, and the two sticks are kind of like getting closer together or getting further apart. So the angle between them is changing. In this, this case, the angle is changing d theta over dt at a rate of 2 degrees per minute. And that's the thing that I said we're going to have to change into radians, and I'll show you why we have to change it to radians. Okay, so when we come up with the area equation, 1 half AB times sine of theta, if you do not plug in the constants, like I was telling you some people at the AP conferences I go to refuse to let their students do this, it would be quite complicated because you would have to do 1 half AB times sine of theta using the product rule. And then you'd also have to use the product rule for that. So a product rule within the product rule. So if I was going to quickly do this, you don't have to do it, but watch what I would have. I'd have 1 half AB times the derivative of sine, of sine of theta is cosine of theta d theta over dt, plus the derivative of 1 half AB is 1 half A dB over dt, plus 1 half dA over dt times B, and then all times sine of theta normal. That's a lot. Like, we don't want to do that. Agree? Yeah, so that's why I get kind of mad when, like, teachers are always like, oh, I never let my students do that. I'm like, this is doing them a disservice, not teaching them they can, can do this. All right, so A and B are both constant values. So we can plug in A and B. So I have A is equal to 1 half 12 times 15 times sine of theta which simplifies down to 90 sine theta. So now when I take the derivative, it's not scary at all. It's just 90 cosine of theta d theta over dt. And we can handle that. Um, I did 1 half times 12 is 6 times 15 is 90. So I just found that number. All right, so if I start to plug things in, so, like, I could plug in 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 degrees is what? What is cosine of 60 degrees? You all know one this. Half. It's one half, right? So, I can plug in 60 degrees. So, what I'm guessing you guys did on your homework, so don't write this, is you probably did cosine of 60 degrees in here, and then you put the d theta over dt was 2 degrees per minute, and you ended up getting, um, let's see, one half times two, so 90. So, you... This wasn't exactly the same as your homework because I think you had three degrees per minute as your answer. Um, so your answer would be 90, but the units would be wrong, okay? Because for here, 90 came from the 12 and the 15 and the 1 half. Those units are meters squared, right? Cosine of 60 degrees, which is 1 half, is just a number. We call those trig ratios. It's a ratio of, like, the side lengths. It's just a number in the end, right? And then the degrees per minute is degrees per minute. So this would be 90 meters squared times degrees per minute, which is really weird. We would never write degrees like that. But what unit should I have if I have dA over dt? Meters squared per minute, right? So there's something that is wrong. Okay, so every single time in calculus, we never do um, degrees in calculus. We always do radians. And this is one of the reasons we always do radians. Because radians is what we call the non-unit. So when you see something with radians, like 180 degrees is the same as pi radians, radians is like a name that we made up. It's not like a unit. Like, what's a radian? Like, radians is not like a, like feet or inches or anything like that. It's nothing, okay? Radians is, pretend it's not there. It's just saying 180 degrees equals pi, okay? So when we plug this in, we're going to have dA over dt equals 90, we can do cosine, you can change the 60 to uh, uh, pi over 3 if you want to. In that case, it was fine if you did 60, because cosine of 60 degrees is still just going to be 1 half. But then right here, where I have d theta over dt, I have to change it. 
So d theta over dt is 2 degrees per minute, but we need to change it so we have 180 degrees on the bottom, pi on top, so it becomes pi over 90. And my units are per minute, like 1 over minute, or radians per minute, right? Did you guys see that? <coughs> so it's going to be pi over 90 here. So 90 times 1 half times pi over 90. So we end up getting pi over 2. And now our units are what we want, meters squared per minute. Okay, so it's kind of weird. But basically, if you see that you have degrees in a problem, I would just change them to radians. That's the best way to do the problems. All right, so the next problem. So it says a balloon rises at a rate of 3 meters per second from a point on the ground that's 30 meters from an observer. So here's my observer, and the balloon is rising. What kind of balloon it is, hot air balloon, whatever. Uh, find the rate of change of the angle of elevation of the balloon. So I'm finding the rate of change of this angle right here, theta, when the balloon is 30 meters above the ground. So the, the balloon is changing, so this is y, and y is getting bigger. So dy over dt, we know, that's the 3 meters per second. That was here. So it rises at a rate of 3 meters per second. <coughs> All right, can we set up an equation that relates y, theta, and 30 if we need it? Yeah, What's, what equation are we going to use? Yeah, exactly. So we're going to say tangent of theta equals opposite, which is y, over adjacent, which is 30. So you can take the derivative here, or you can like multiply the 30 over. So 30 tangent theta equals y, and then take the derivative. So we get 30 secant squared theta, d theta over dt, equals dy over dt when we take the derivative. So remember, whatever variable you had, tack on the d theta over dt, dy over dt, whatever it was. OK. So sometimes we need to use a second triangle, because we don't know what theta is at that point in time. Can you guys guess what theta is at this point in time? You should probably guess. It's 45 degrees. So we need, we need that for right here, for the theta. So um, we can find that by using the original equation. Tangent of theta equals 30 over 30. Theta is equal to 45 degrees, which we're going to write in radians, pi over 4. Just because in calculus, we always use radians, right? We talked about that. So we're going to do 30 times secant is 1 over cosine. So cosine was root 2 over 2 squared d theta over dt is what we're trying to find, and dy over dt, it's rising at a rate of 3 meters per second. Right. And we just solve it out. So if I do root 2 over 2 and I square it, so what is root 2 over 2 squared? 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So if I have 1 over 1 half, I get 2. So all of that works out to be 2. So I have 30 times 2 times d theta over dt equals 3. So d theta over dt is equal to 3 over 60, which is 1 over 20. And what would my units be then? <coughs> it's radians per second. Does that make sense? So if we don't have anything, we put radians. So it's like nothing per second, radians per second. And how can you figure that out? You could go back to your original and you could say, OK, where, what was this 30? This 30 was 30 meters, right? Tangent of theta is a number, and y is a meters. So when I took the derivative, this was still 30 meters. This was a number. We don't know what this is, but we know that dy over dt was meters per second. So if you take meters per second and you divide over by meters, you end up with just 1 over seconds, right? So when that happens, when you have 1 over seconds, that's really radians. Radians is the non-measure, okay? So you can write radians in. Do you guys understand what I'm talking about? I see lots of scared faces. If you're scared now, oh man, we're getting ready to do a trapezoidal trough. <laughs> All right, let's see this construction worker one. So a construction worker pulls a five meter plank up the side of the building by means of a rope tied to one end of the plank. Okay, the worker pulls the rope up, so this distance right here 
that I drew in blue is increasing. It's getting bigger by 0.15 meters every single second. Do you guys see that? <coughs> As that happens, this part I'm drawing in green down at the bottom, this part in green gets smaller right every second, okay? So what we're going to use is we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to have x and I'm going to have y, and then 5 is a constant. So I can do x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. And I can take the derivative. So I have 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt equals the derivative of 25, which is 0. And I told you whenever I do Pythagorean theorem, I always get rid of those 2s. I just divide out the 2. I divided the two zero by two. All right, so it says um, how fast is the end of the plank sliding along the ground? So we want to find dx over dt when x is equal to 2.5. <laughs> so we know x is 2.5. We know we're trying to find dx over dt. We don't know y. So that's where we draw our second triangle. And we're like, okay, well, I know at this point in time, x is 2.5. This is a 5-meter plank, and I want to find y. So I do Pythagorean theorem. You guys agree? So I do 25, right? 5 squared minus 2.5 squared is 6.25. So I get the square root of 18.75, which is like 4.330 and something. So I'm going to store as a. I need it. So I'm going to put a in, and then I have dy over dt equals 0. And now I solve for dy over dt. Oh, wait. dy over dt we know, don't we? Yeah, thank you. dy over dt is 0 0.15. So I'm going to do a times 0.15, subtract it over, divide by 2.5. So dx over dt is going to be negative 0.2598 something. <laughs> so negative 0 0.260. So negative 0 0.260 meters per second. Two times x. Oh, I took out the twos. I divided by two. You can divide by two. Like, you can leave your twos in there. If you yeah, want. but it's not the Yeah, you should get the same. So did you store your y value when you found y? Mm -hmm. Try it again. Maybe just put it in the calculator on. I think that's right. Did you guys get the same thing? I remember that number, I thought. All right, so it says, how fast is the end of the plank sliding along the ground? So the, the end of the plank is getting closer to the building at a rate of 0 0.260 meters per second, right? So kind of be careful with those negatives. Um, so maybe write a final statement for each thing, OK? Right, are you still perplexed? Um, I would say write a final sentence. So like I would say something like, the plank gets closer to the building at a rate of 0 0.260 meters per second. So that way you definitely have it, right? All right, so number four. So gravel is being dumped from a conveyor belt at a rate of 30 cubic feet per minute. So that's our dV over dt. And so it's going up this conveyor belt, and it's getting like dropped into a cone shape. And this cone shape, the diameter and the height are expanding at the same rate, which I think doesn't really happen. I think gravity would make the diameter grow faster than the height. But you know, what do I know? I didn't write this calculus book here, this problem at least. I did write the rest of the book. But I used this problem from somewhere. All right, so its coarseness is such that it forms in a pile in the shape of a cone whose base diameter is equal to the height. So how fast is the height of the pile increasing when the pile is 10 feet high? OK, 
Okay, so we're going to set up our volume equation. Do you guys all have the volume equations down? No, that is a sphere. <laughs> I was telling the other class that I should do derivatives drill, but only with, um, instead of doing derivatives, they should be geometry formulas that you should know. Yeah, I should do it. All right, so I have 1 third pi r squared h. And uh, in these problems, the cone problems, I told you that you should always, like, try to get them in terms of, like, v equals one variable over here, like either r or h, okay? So in this case, we know that 2r is equal to h. And what we're trying to find is how fast is the height of the pile increasing when the pile is 10 feet high. So we want dh over dt when h is equal to 10. So we should probably get it all in terms of h, right? So let's replace the r with h over 2. So I'm going to have v equals 1 third pi h over 2 squared times h. So if I hadn't said something about the coarseness of the gravel is such that these are equal, then you can't do this. You have to keep it as r and h in that case. <coughs> but for the inverted cones, do you guys remember the funnel ones? You can always change it so it's either just r or just h. Okay. So upright cones, you can't always do that. Inverted cones, you can. All right. So I'm going to get 1 third pi h squared over 4 times h, which makes pi over 12 h cubed. So then we take the derivative, so we get the pi over 12, and we have our 3 h squared dh over dt. So you can make that pi over 4 h squared if you want. And we just plug things in, right? So we know h is 10, and we're finding dh over dt, and we know the volume is increasing, so it's positive 30. So it's 6 over 5 pi, um, which is approximately 0.382 feet per minute, if you found the decimal. Okay, makes sense. All right, chop, turtle, chop, we ready? All right, so I will admit, when I first started teaching calculus, I messed up the trapezoidal trough. So sad. All right, so what I was thinking is, oh, wait, we use similar triangles, so we should use similar trapezoids. But remember, so don't draw this, but similar triangles, we know our r and our h are in the same ratio as this r and this h, right? The little r's. Okay? Why can I not do that? So, like, for the water. This was the water. Why can I not do that for a trapezoid with water in it? Yeah, Grant? I have actually heard the question. Yes. Can you give me a top-down view of the trapezoidal trough? Because depending on the bowing of the edges, it could be trapezoidal all the way around or just trapezoidal on one plane. Yeah, it's trapezoidal on the front and the back in this picture, and then the sides are rectangles. So maybe I need to create a trough. It's like, uh, think about like what pigs eat of. Have you right. guys seen a trap sort of trough? Do you know what that is? Yeah. Like if you drew it from the top down, I'm sorry, I can't really. The top down would be like a bigger rectangle on top and a smaller rectangle like on the bottom. This? Yes. Or like this. Ignoring perspective. It's like the top one. So he's saying like that the top of the, this is the top, and this is the bottom, and then there's, it goes in like that, right? Do you guys agree? So all sides bow out. Hmm. Now, I'm, now I'm confused on what you're saying. Um, <laughs> Maybe I need is, to bring in a trapezoidal trap. If you draw, this, this would be the side view. I think they're rectangles. And then the this is the other yeah. side view. Like, like one of the sides like don't move out at all. Like are the short these ones are the like sides with the smaller area fully <laughs> ninety degrees from the base? 
or are they at some other angle? Because it this it, angle is not ninety degrees, but this angle is ninety degrees. Well, yes, but is <laughs> is it one palm? I don't know. Let me bring one in. I'll I'll make a trap in little trap so you can see. This angle from this side to the base, a right angle. I believe it is, yes. All right, that is. All right, so anyway, so why can I not say, so I cannot say that I have similar trapezoids. Why can I not say that I have similar trapezoids? Julia Emerson, why? Why is this one drawn in black not similar to my blue water trapezoid? What do you mean it's not proportioned? Why is it not? Is there height in the same ratio as the height as top to here? Maybe. They probably are. What about this? Break it into its two trapezoids, the blue one and the other one. They have exactly the same base. Do you guys see that? So they can't be similar. It's the same measurement on the bottom. Do we see that? Okay, so they cannot be similar. So when we're doing these similar trapezoids, what we're going to do every single time is we're going to take this trapezoid and we're going to use similar triangles right there. So we're going to create a little X and we're going to use that. Okay, so you probably want to write kind of tiny. If you need an extra piece of paper, you can use an extra piece of paper. Okay, so here we go. Are we ready? Let's do it. All right, so the cross section of a five meter trap. So when I say five meters, this is five meters from here to here. Is the bottom of that trapezoidal trap, is it the same as the bottom of the water? Yes. Is it always the same? Right. So that's constant. All right, and then we have a two meter lower base. So this is two meters. Is that constant? Is it the same as the water? Yeah, that's constant. A three meter upper base. That is not constant. Do you guys see as the water? Here's the, the water one. It's not the same. Julia, are you with me? Um, okay, so then water is running into the trough at a rate of one cubic meter per minute. So dV over dt is equal to one. And we want to know how fast is the water level rising. So find dH over dt when the water, so when h is one. So this is going to be my H. So for the whole thing, this would be the H, but for just the water, it's going to be right there. So it gets a little confusing because we always talk about the trapezoid of the water and then the trapezoid for the whole shape. All right. So my volume formula is the area of the base times the height. The base of this are these two parallel bases, which are trapezoids. So we know when we do the area of the base times the height, then my area of my base is a trapezoid. So it's 1 half h times v1 plus v2. Do we all remember that from geometry? Trapezoids? Better, because we're going to use lots of trapezoids in calculus. All right, so I'm going to have 1 half h times v1 plus v2. And then I don't want to use h again, because h is going to be something different. So I'm going to use an L, not for slant height or anything like that in geometry, but for the length of this. So that's going to be my length. Okay, so B2 is constant. That's the bottom base. B1 changes. So this was my original B1. If it was full, this would be the new B1. Okay. Do you guys see where B1 is? Okay. So B1. And then uh, the height of the water changes. So here's the height if it was totally full. Here's the height of the water now. Okay. So here's what we're going to draw. So the key to doing these problems is if we can get it in a single variable, we're good. So we could we could start out by plugging in the constants. We're like, okay, well, I know V2 is 2. I know my length of the trough is 5, so I at least have that. But you should always be able to draw a sketch so that H and V1 are related as well. So here's the sketch. So off to the side, kind of draw a trapezoid. Probably want it somewhat big so you can sketch on it. So here's our water. We knew the top of this was 3 meters and the bottom was 2 and we said we were going to use similar triangles. 
just because we just don't have enough variables. We put an x here. We just need more variables in this problem. And this is going to be the height of the water. We're going to divide it over here as well. This is also x. What is the distance from here to here? It's 2, right? Do you guys see? So 3, if this is 3, and we had 2 down here, do you guys see how this is like? What should these ones be? So along the top with the 3, this is also 2. So what should this one and this one be? Yep, 1 half, exactly. So we're drawing in everything we know. So this whole distance is what we're referring to B1. So B1 is equal to 2 plus 2x. And we also know from the similar triangles that uh, 0 0.5 over x is equal to 0 0.5 over x is equal to um, what was the height of this whole thing? Did I write that down? I didn't. 2. Okay, so it's equal to 2 over h. So we are going to try to get everything in terms of h. We're going to try to take this b1 and write it in terms of h. So let's start with our similar triangles. 0.5h is equal to 2x. So h is the same as point, so 2 divided by 0.5. Um, divided by 0.5, so 4x. I don't know if that's what I want, though. Hang on, is that what I want? No, I want x. I want to solve for x. So x is equal to 0.25h. Because now I go here. It's like multiple substitutions. So I say, okay, I have b1 plus, or equals 2 plus 2 times 0.25h. So it's going to be 2 plus 0.5h. And now we plug that in there. Lots of things. So now we get v equals 1 half h. v1 is 2 plus 0.5h plus 2 and then times 5. So we get v equals 1 half let me write that as 5 over 2h. I'm going to get annoyed with that 5 at the end. So 5 over 2h times 4 plus 0.5h. So we get 20 over 2 is 10h plus 0.5 is 1 half. 1 half times 5 over 2 is 5 over 4h squared. Okay. So look at what we started with. A crazy formula that had v, h, v1, v2, and l. Imagine all the crazy math teachers that make you start from there. And they make you actually take the derivative of that. Think how messy that will be. And then say, thank you, Mrs. Cox, for showing me this other way. I know it's still complicated, but it's better than the alternative. <laughs> so you guys can handle this. So now we take the derivative dv over dt is equal to 10 dh over dt plus 5 over 2 when I take the derivative of h dh over dt. And we plug in. We knew what dh over dt was 1, I believe. Is that right? No, it's what we're trying to find. H is 1. I did 5 over 4 times 2. Um, so I'm going to plug in H equals 1 and dV over dt is 1. So I get 1 equals 10 dH over dt plus 5 over 2 times 1 times dH over dt. So I have 10 of something plus 2.5 of something. So I get 12.5. Right? So 12.5 dh over dt is equal to 1. So I get dh over dt is 1 over 12.5, which is 12 over 5 was 25 over 2, so it's going to be the reciprocal, which is 2 over 25. Where you could have a 0 0.4, is that right? 4 hundredths, 0.04. Oh, wow. I, no, I was dividing the 12.5 over here. 1 divided by 12.5. So what's this, meters per, what was the, was it minutes? Oh, okay. Yeah, minutes. That's our answer. Okay. 
Okay. You do have one like that on your homework. If I put 